Welcome back to another Precon Upgrade video. Before we get into it, guys, we are giving away this Precon. If you want to enter, all you've got to do is jump down into the comments. Let us know why you want to win, what card you'd take out of this deck, and what card you'd put into this deck. Please make sure your answers are thoughtful, as we will choose about 10 finalists from those comments, and then we'll pick one at random. So we do take your answers into consideration. We read each one of them. So don't just give a one-word answer. We're probably not going to pick one of those. So if you're interested in competing in this contest, jump in the comments and do that, and then watch the rest of this video as you had already planned to do. Good luck, everybody. Let's get on to it. What's up, you guys? Today we are looking at Satya, Aether Flux Genius. He is the commander of the new precon, Creative Energy. This is a brand new precon focused completely on energy. We did have an energy precon back in the Fallout precons. That one was mainly focused around artifacts. This one is a little more versatile as it is not bound uh, to adhere to the intellectual property of Fallout. Um, so there's a little more freedom there to bring back other energy cards from the past so there's a whole bunch of new cards as well um, but first let's look at what satya does satya is a human artificer a three five for one blue red white and it has menace and haste and says whenever it attacks create a tapped and attacking token that's a copy of up to one other non-token creature you control you get to energy at the beginning of your next end step sacrifice it unless you pay an amount of energy equal to its mana value so this commander is all about making copies of other creatures and then using our energy to pay the CMC for those creatures in order to keep them around. Otherwise, they get sacrificed at the end of the next end step. So that being said, the game plan for this deck and our budget build is going to be creatures with ETB effects and then ways to abuse those ETB effects and ways to abuse attack effects so when this creature attacks this happens satya makes them tapped and attacking so you're going to get an etb and then when it attacks it's going to have that attack trigger as well so we're going to focus heavily on those two aspects so we are not going to give an entire deck rundown here uh that being said we are going to kind of go over the strategy a little bit just so that you guys know what we're kind of trying to build into with our additions and our subtractions so the deck comes with a ton of cards that make energy um, a lot of those cards have payoffs on them as well so ways to use the energy that we create in addition to that our commander wants to use that energy to keep those tokens he's making around otherwise they go away at the end of turn all of that to say it's an aggressive deck that wants to go wide making the tokens abusing the etbs abusing the attacks and then um, using those creatures to overrun and absolutely just demolish your opponents our cuts we are not actually going to be cutting any of the new cards that are coming out in the pre-con or from the modern horizons 3 main set um, we just feel that taking new cards out of a pre-con um, you're essentially not upgrading the pre-con at that point you're kind of making a new deck um, so we just decide we've just decided that in all of our pre-con upgrade videos we don't cut any of the brand new cards made specifically for our pre-cons. Uh, it's kind of a double-edged sword. Sometimes there's definitely cards that don't make sense in the decks that get made, uh, but that's just kind of our policy. So if you guys are wondering why any anything that's in the deck got left that maybe you feel like isn't, isn't a great fit, uh, sometimes that's the answer as to why we leave it in. So looking at the precon in its entirety, it has a whole bunch of mana rocks in it. Too many mana rocks, in my personal opinion. It also has 38 lands, and so we're going to dump a couple of those as well. We're going to get rid of the three temple lands that each come in uh, tapped. Um, so we're going to get rid of those, taking us down to a total of 35 lands, which is still plenty of lands. Um, we also are going to have Burnished Hearts in the here, um, so potentially you could make copies of that and go get more lands. There's some really good mana rocks that came in this. However, there are also some mana rocks that uh, we absolutely just do not need. And so the mana rocks we're going to be getting rid of are going to be Coalition Relic and Coveted Jewel. Um, we are also going to be getting rid of the Talisman of Creativity and the Talisman of Progress. We've just got some other ones that have better function in here. We're also going to be getting rid of Midnight Clock, which is another mana rock, taps for blue. Um, and then after a certain amount of time counters, you get to draw a new hand. That one's a little bit slow, kind of not in exactly the wheelhouse of what we really are trying to do. So we're going to bump that to make room for some better stuff. 
We are also going to get rid of Austere Command. It's an excellent board wipe, but we already have Farewell in here. And then we have the new board wipe that is um, an energy-centric board wipe. So we're going to keep those two um, and get rid of Austere Command. We're also going to get rid of Grinzo. And we're going to get rid of Angel of Invention. Um, good cards just Again, making room for some better cards that are going to synergize better with our deck and what it wants to do. And then finally, we're going to get rid of Glimmer of Genius. It is a draw spell. Um, you do get two energy, but it is four to scry two, draw two, and get two energy. So a little bit more than we want to really sink into it as a commitment um, for mana to essentially draw two cards and get two energy is not a great rate um, we have better card draw spells out there and we have the ability to make a boatload of energy um, so we don't really need this as an energy spell and finally we are moving on now to our additions the part that everyone is here for but before we do that please guys like and subscribe if you haven't already um, it's free it doesn't cost you anything it takes no time at all to just press that button below sub it helps us out a ton if you like the video it helps us out a ton with the algorithm as well um, and helps us to be able to keep doing this and giving away awesome things to you guys that said let's take it away and let's check out our awesome additions to this uh, with our $50 budget. So first up, we've got Electrostatic Pummeler. Um, it is a three drop for an artifact creature. It's a construct. When it enters the battlefield, you get three energy, and then you can pay three energy, and then Electrostatic Pummeler gets plus X plus X till the end of turn, where X is its power. So you're going to give it a buff, and if you have a way to pump this up with counters or other things like that, um, it's going to get even bigger. Um, so a cool addition there. With the ETB, you get the three counters, so your commander can abuse that as well. Um, next, we have Electro Siphon. This is two blue and a red for a counter spell. You get an amount of energy equal to its mana value. So um, it is kind of like a mana drain, except for it's an energy drain. So for two blue and a red, you're going to make a whole bunch of energy counters. Then we have another counter spell. This one is new and it is Invert Polarity. You choose a target spell, then flip a coin. If you win the flip, you gain control of that spell and you may choose new targets for it. If you lose the flip, you counter that spell. So worst case scenario, you're going to counter the spell. Best case scenario, you're going to get it and then be able to choose new targets for it. So you could steal someone's creature, you could steal someone's instant or sorcery and take that for yourself. So a very fun, cool new card from Modern Horizons 3. Then we have Cloud Blazer. This is a human scout creature for three white blue, um, which is a little pricey, but um, it's a two, two with flying. And when it enters the battlefield, you're gonna gain two life and draw two cards. Again, with your commander, you're gonna be able to make a copy of that. And then on ETB, draw two more cards. So that card is here for the card draw mode. Then we have Conduit Goblin. It is one white, one red, and it says when it enters the battlefield, you get two energy counters, so more energy creation. And then at the beginning of combat on your turn, you can pay an energy, and if you do, another target creature you control gets plus one, plus O, oh, and gains haste until the end of turn. So a way to give something you control haste. So a good little haste enabler and a two drop um, getting this getting this mana curve down a little bit. Next, we have Panharmonicon. It is four. Like I said, we're going to lean into abusing the ETBs, and what better way to abuse ETBs than with Panharmonicon? Let's double them up. So if an artifact or creature entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, it triggers an additional time. So now we're going to get double all of those ETBs. And then we've got Tune the Narrative. Remember I said earlier that four seemed a little steep to get to draw two cards and get two energy? Let's do it for a single blue. Now we don't get to the scry two, but we still get to draw a card and get two energy counters. So a lot better, um, again, getting this mana curve on this deck down just a smidge. And then we have Unbreakable Formation. Um, we decided that we wanted to run a little bit of protection as there was nearly none in this deck. Um, Unbreakable Formation is a good way to do that. And if you do it in your main phase, you get to add counters to all of it. And we've got several ways to proliferate in this deck as well. So um, a nice little addition here on a budget, especially Next up, we've got some heavy hitters and then what I consider to be our MVP banger of an addition. So let's check those out now. We've got another new card from Modern Horizons 3. This one is called Guide of Souls. Um, it is a 1-2 human cleric for one white mana. 
And it says, whenever another creature enters a battlefield under your control, you gain one life and get an energy counter. And then it says, whenever you attack, you may pay three energy. And when you do, put two plus one plus one counters and a flying counter on a target attacking creature. It becomes an angel in addition to its other types. So we are going to be able to, once a turn at combat, pay the three energy counters and buff something that is a permanent buff because it's one one counters. And then um, it's going to get a flying counter as well. So evasion. So super good. And especially it's a one mana cost creature. So again, lowering our curve, which this deck desperately needed. Next up, we've got two cards that are extremely similar. We have got Port Razor, which is three red red for an orc pirate. And it says whenever it deals combat damage to a player, untap each creature you control after this combat phase, there's an additional combat phase. And then it says Port Razor can't attack a player that's already been attacked this turn. However, with our commander, we can make copies of this and swing the copy at someone who's already been hit by Port Razor, um, essentially giving us as many combats as we can uh, as we can get with this card, as long as there's a way to continue dealing combat damage to a player if someone is open, or you have a way to give this evasion, we can kind of keep hitting people and continue getting multiple combat phases. So that is a potential win con. And then we also have the more popular win con with extra combats, which is combat celebrant for two and a red. And it says, if it hasn't been exerted this turn, you may exert it as it attacks. When you do untap all the other creatures you control. And after this phase, there's an additional combat phase. So potentially, um, as long as the original combat celebrant doesn't die, you can keep making copies of combat celebrant and you can exert the new copies of combat celebrant and continue taking extra combats until you win. So potentially an infinite combo there. Um, and then lastly, which is what I consider to be our biggest hitter, is going to be All Will Be One. It is three red red, and it says whenever you put one or more counters on a permanent or player, All Will Be One deals that much damage to target opponent, creature and opponent controls, or planeswalker and opponent controls. So now every time we make an energy counter, we're going to be hitting our opponents for damage. And we're making so, so, so much energy that this thing is going to go absolutely crazy unless someone deals with it. So that one to me is the heaviest hitter in this deck. Um, Combat Celebrant is going to be potentially infinite combats. Um, Port Razor potentially is going to be enough consecutive combats to win you the game. So those are our additions to the deck. We hope you enjoyed the video. Again, like and subscribe if you haven't already. It helps us out a ton. Be sure to enter to win this deck in the comments below. Make sure you're subscribed as well, and uh, we will draw those winners uh, in two weeks when the set actually releases. And be sure to check out our other upgrade guides as we are giving away each of these pre-cons. So you can potentially win all four of them as long as you enter in each of those other videos. So watch this next one over here. You might win that one too. Plus, you might want to buy that deck. Check it out. Have a great night, everybody. Check us out on all of our social medias, and we will see you next time. Bye!